Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings but today we're going to continue our countdown of our top 100 board games of all time this is number 30 down to 21 there are some juicy tasty board games on this list so rather than me talk at my ass for the next 30 seconds we shall crack on with this list board games 4k Number 30 on this list is the granddaddy of area control games. It's El Grande. This is without doubt one of the best area control games and also one of the most streamlined area control games that you can get. Essentially what you'll be doing, you'll be playing cards to move your caballeros around the map with your cubes basically or you might chuck them into the castillo which is the castle you'll follow a set number of phases and you'll do a bit of scoring and you'll do that three times and whoever's got the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner i know it sounds like a really dull boring generic euro but honestly el grande is where it all began for us in terms of area control we opened the door to other games of this type and if you want to get a sense of where euro area control games have come from el grande is definitely a game you should pick up number 29 on this list is another granddaddy this is the settlers of Catan, or Catan, as it is well no we held off on this one for quite a while because we thought it looked stuffy and boring and old but we eventually picked it up and my god we love Catan. don't listen to any of those nuggets that tell you that Catan is old and it's not worth playing anymore to be replaced by other games they are talking out their ass a game is not shit just because it's old if that's the case people wouldn't be playing chess would they but yeah Catan, what it sees you're doing you'll be rolling dice to give you resources that will allow you to build settlements roads and cities you'll be connecting these up you'll be getting the longest road to get extra points you might end up with the largest army you might buy development cards that will give you a bonus but essentially the first player to get 10 points will be the winner of Catan. this game is responsible for the boom in board gaming since 1995 if this game hadn't been made we probably would be living in an alternative reality so like i said ignore the knobheads who tell you that Catan is shit it ain't if you haven't played it go and play it because it's great Number 28 on this list is a worker placement game that is set in the apocalypse. It's Anachrony. This game comes with some wonderful miniatures that don't actually do anything. You just put your token in and you're going to use them as workers. But what you'll be doing in this game, you'll be doing the usual worker placement stuff by placing your workers out and taking actions. But the thing about this is that you can go forward in time to borrow resources from the future. And when you get to the future, you will have to pay them back. So it's essentially a loan system, but... The way it's implemented really does make you feel like you're sort of boring from the future. Another wonderful thing about this game is that the apocalypse is unavoidable. It's going to happen and you know it's going to happen. So you have to plan for that. And that Anachrony is one of the best worker placement games we have played. There are a couple of expansions for this. I think it's a heavy game, so you need to be aware of that before you go into it and it's also very fiddly. There's lots of little tokens involved, but that don't matter because Anachrony is a fantastic bloody game. 27 on this list is a game by Paolo Mori. It's Dogs of War in this game. You will be working for different houses as like a mercenary and you'll be building armies to fight against the other players. But the thing about Dogs of War is that alliances are continually shifting. You might be working with somebody in one section of the board and then you might be working against them on another section and you'll be bribing each other. You'll be slinging insults across the board. Like all Paolo Mori games, this game is very simple. It's just a case of gathering the rewards that are on the board to give you points. There is a majority aspect to this where you've got to get your flags high up on the track at the top of the board. Dogs of War, for sheer simplicity and the fact that it's got these shifting alliances, it's a fantastic Euro slash war game, right? Number 26 on this list is a game that people like to call a sandbox game. It's not a sandbox game because you can't do whatever you like, but it's as close as you're going to get to a sandbox game. It's Zaya Legends of a Drift System. This is a game that you could play for as long as you like. You can play it up to a certain amount of victory points. You can play up to, say, three victory points, or you can play up to 20 victory points. If you play up to 20 victory points, it's going to take fucking ages, so I wouldn't recommend it. But 
there's so much to do in this game you can become a trader you can just move around the tiles buying and selling goods or you can become a pirate in which case you can blow the shit out of people there's loads and loads of missions to go on you can build all these ships it comes with these fantastic pre-painted miniatures there's an expansion called embers of a forsaken star there's a a mini expansion which gives you extra color ships and all that sort of thing and there's also tiles you can buy where you can diy your own stuff right so this game is endlessly replayable it's massive it can be a little bit luck based because you are going to be rolling dice but if you can accept that then Zaya legends of the drift system is one of the best sandbox games that you can get Number 25 on this list is a hidden traitor game by Bruno Kafala and Ludovic Malbronk. It is Shadows over Camelot. This game is compared to Battlestar Galactica, the ball game, but we ended up getting rid of Battlestar Galactica, the ball game, because it took too bloody long. And we regret that now because it's now out of fucking print. Shadows over Camelot, you're going to be all working together to get a certain amount of swords around Camelot. You will be trying to repel the forces of evil, but there may or may not be a traitor that is trying to encourage evil from winning the game this game plays up to seven players it looks absolutely fantastic as with a lot of days of wonder games from this period it still plays really really well today it's probably our favorite hidden traitor game maybe depending on what else is on this list because i can't remember what's on it but yeah shadows over camelot a good example of days of wonders classic period in the mid noughties 24 on this list is a racing game that is as simple as me it's Ave Caesar each player is going to be given a deck of identical cards you'll be drawing three cards you'll be choosing one card to move your chariot forward in the race a couple of things you've got to remember is that there are bottlenecks on the board which means that nobody can move through your chariot and the second thing is that if you're in the lead you cannot play a six right so that's a couple of things you've got to be aware of fantastic game Arve caesar is one of our favorite racing games mainly because it plays up to six it's so simple and there's so many moments where you get blocked you are shouting all sorts of things at a person that's blocked you endlessly replayable always fun if you can get hold of a copy think it's out of print then get it it's the quintessential simple racing game, mate. Number 23 on this list is another game by Eric M. Lang. It's probably one of the most lavishly produced board games we have owned. It is Rising Sun. We backed the Deluxe Edition on Kickstarter. I hate Kickstarter. We don't do that anymore. But we did this and we don't regret it one bit. This game looks absolutely amazing. It is basically an area control game in the same vein as Blood Rage and all that sort of stuff. One of the main draws of this is that you're going to be able to control vast array of monsters that are in the game, each with their own special ability. There's a unique combat system sort of thing. It sort of reminds us of the stuff that's in Cry Havoc, so maybe it's not that unique, but it's got a unique combat system where you're not actually going to be rolling any dice, you're going to be going through a series of phases and the loser will actually get paid by the winner in war reparations, right? So that is quite a novel thing about this game. You really do need to play this with an odd number of players because there's a phase in the game where you're going to be forming alliances and you can break alliances. So if there's always somebody left out, then it does make for a better game. So yeah, Rising Sun, one of Eric M. Lang's best games he's ever done. Number 22 on this list is a dexterity game that is actually built by some geezer in his garage, right? It's Flick Fleet. This is a game that we were crying out for for a number of years. This is what you wanted to do with Star Wars X-Wing the Miniatures game. When I first got hold of that X-Wing game, the first thing I thought about is flicking that bloody X-Wing across the table. But obviously I didn't do it. I didn't want to upset the Star Wars geeks. So I ended up thinking about when a game is going to come out that's going to allow me to do that. And Flick Fleet has arrived and it is that game. In this game, you'll take control of a fleet of acrylic ships. You'll be placing them on a player surface and you're looking at different scenarios, flicking your ships and then flicking dice off the ships to do damage to your opponents. There are two expansions for this now. The game is absolutely huge. We're still waiting for a four player variant so we can have massive space battles. But yeah, Flick Fleet, one of the most original dexterity games that we've played in a long time and probably one of the best dexterity games that we've played in a long time so yeah still available go out and get it it's fantastic that is flick fleet that's a number 22 so number 21 on this list is another game by Uwe Rosenberg. It's Agricola. This is a game that lets you take control of a medieval farm. Who would have thought that that would have been fun? In this game, you will be 
placing your workers on the board to get resources and to do different actions that will that will allow you to feed your workers and thus avoid a penalty at the end of a certain number of rounds one of the main strengths of this game is that it comes with a ton of occupation cards so many that every single game you're going to be playing at this will be different agricola has spawned loads of sequels it's been re-implemented by rosenberg so many times like in caverna but yeah agricola is probably our favorite one of that type so yeah there you go that's number 21 that's agricola so you go that wraps up the next installment of our top 100 board games of all time let us know what you think whether or not you think we're talking a load of bollocks and come back for the next one which will be number 20 all the way down to number 11 see you later